are you ready for this? Tony Harvey here from HRV TV and today's interview is, you can see like I'm just smiling, I'm so happy about this one. Uh, I sent out the message to a, a man by the name of Bill Allen, who for you who don't know is um, obviously one of the greatest actors of all time. Uh, started in a little, little known movie back in 1986 called Rad and um, this thing was pretty much uh, my bread and butter for the next... 30 years. I don't think I've stopped watching it. I've got a VHS copy. I have a DVD copy of this movie. It's one of my favorite movies. There's pretty much two movies I watched growing up. And one of them was Rad. And today we're going to chat to the lead, the main guy, Crew Jones. Crew Jones. We're going to talk to Crew Jones. How awesome is that? So uh, we're going to have a chat to him in a second. And um, as you can see, I'm, um, I'm pretty stoked about the whole thing. So get ready for a Crew Jones interview. <laughs> and it's going to be awesome. So, HRV TV brought to you by HRV Fitness and BMX Coach. There's a BMX Coach subscription. Get online. One thing about the BMX Coach, guys, is, is it's it's perfect for everybody, especially for, for, for fathers. It's perfect for kids. Um, if you want to train together with your kid, you can do it all at home. You don't need to go to the gym. It's just all bodyweight exercises plus your sprints. And um, it's pretty awesome, guys. So, check it out. BMX Coach forward slash, uh, it's on Facebook, and um, it's a Facebook forward slash BMX coach, yeah, check it out, it, it's awesome, it's a subscription, it's thirteen ninety five a month, you'll get your training programs every month, and um, you just get fast, just get fast, that's it, that's all you got to do is get faster, so sit back and relax, and get ready to speak to Crew Jones, because it's going to go off. Alright, here we are, with the man, the myth, the legend, um, the man himself, Crew Jones, also known as Bill Allen, and um, we're here to, to have a bit of a chat about the movie Rad, and um, just off the bat, mate, I just want to say thanks for, for taking the time to have a bit of a chat with us, and uh, you don't understand how excited I was when I got the call back from you and saying that you were happy to come on to HRV TV and have a bit of a chat about the movie, and um, yeah, I, we were just talking a, a second ago, but... Um, yeah, man, this is like one of the movies I watched growing up and, and I pretty much got a good bunch of four or five friends and we all still, to this day, throw like rad quotes at each other when we ride and all sorts of dumb stuff like that. So it's, um yeah, it's pretty awesome to be chatting you today, mate. Thanks, Tony. It's really, uh, really a pleasure to talk to you way down under. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, so for people who don't know, and this is this is a funny thing too, you get kids in BMX and you said, oh, have you ever seen that movie Rad? And they just look at you with a blank stare, you know, but obviously I grew up in the 80s and raced in the 80s, so um, this was pretty much my bread and butter. So I'll give a bit of a background on the movie. So Rad was developed in 1986, is that right? It was developed probably a couple of years earlier. It was shot in 1986. Six. Okay, cool. I'm sorry. Shot, shot in 1985 and released in 86. Okay, cool. And it was shot in Canada. You had some some famous actors actors and actresses in there. Uh, Laurie Lachlan, uh, who went on to do Full House. Tali Shire, who was uh, obviously in the Rocky movies. Uh, Ray Walston, who also did a bunch of great movies, and obviously yourself. Um, so before the movie, did you did you know much about BMX racing? I knew almost nothing about BMX racing. I had uh, a little experience riding bikes as a kid, but very little. So uh, my first introduction to BMX was receiving the script and auditioning for the movie. I didn't really have time or the ability to heal up in case I got injured before the movie started. So I was just thrown right into the fire and kind of had to learn what is what it was about as I went along. Yep. Yep. I um I remember when I was I still remember when I was a kid, excuse me, and I first saw the movie and I was I mean obviously this was in eighty six, so how was I? I would have been nine, ten back in the day. And um I remember hearing about this movie, like, oh there's this movie, BMX movie coming out and like as a club, the clubs were actually getting together to go to the movies to watch this race. And um, they're like, oh, this guy does a backflip in the movie. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, like, he flips the bike in the air and lands on his two wheels and rides off. And we're like, and that and that was just the whole thing for me. Like, it was just crazy. So I, I remember that. And then obviously once it came out on VHS, I ride to the video shop about 100 times and just keep hiring the same movie over and over and over again. And 
uh, one day I, I went to a movie, I went to a video shop in the middle of nowhere and they had the copy of Rad there. And I went up to the lady and I said, oh, look, I want to uh, buy that, that VHS off you. Like, I can keep it. And she's like, oh, look, it's going to cost you about five bucks. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no worries. So I was wrapped. I had my own copy of Rad. It was in the cover and everything. So, you know, I was pumped on that for a good good couple of years. So I used to sit on top of the, the VHS player in my room. So I was pretty stoked. That was like my little trophy. <laughs> That's huge, yeah. They uh, go for a lot of money now. If you can find one in shrink wrap, they'll go for up to a 1000 US dollars. Wow. I've seen. So they're... Wow. Are you amazed? I, I watched one of your other interviews. There's a couple of interviews with you online already, so I'm, I was trying to ask different questions. Um, are you amazed? Like Someone asked you how, how successful the movie is now, but back in the day, obviously, it didn't get that good a review and it didn't get as much media as it does now with social media and all that sort of stuff. But are you amazed the impact it's had on the world? Like This is a worldwide phenomenon. Like So many people all over the world know this movie. Yeah, I'm pretty humbled by it, actually. You know, I was an actor on a movie set for six weeks, 29, 30 years ago. And you always hope something is going to do well, particularly if you're so involved in it. And um, uh, like you said, it was a bit disappointing at the time, but the snowball effect is real, and, and the nostalgia uh, effect is also kicked in. So... I feel like we're kind of riding a crest here, and it's really exciting to be a part of. And uh, so there will be other projects, and 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 I have the fans in my heart. Yeah. And I'm I'm very mindful of them, so I'm I'm really trying to come up with something that that they're going to be uh, really excited about. Awesome. And that's the um, the thirty year reunion is coming up, yeah. That and uh, I've got the Heroes of Dirt movie coming out this summer. Yep. And I was telling you earlier, uh, Eric Bunkby and his wife Jill produced that, and I'm going to be doing another extreme sports movie with them, uh, particularly with the Rad fans in mind. Yeah, that's sick, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. When you uh, when you got the call up for the movie, uh, obviously you've done a little bit of TV and stuff already. Did you um did you have much time to practice on a BMX bike? Did not. I was not a bicycle owner at the time, and uh, I guess I depended too much on the filmmakers to tell me what I needed to do, which was absolutely nothing. <laughs> same with Mark Connor, same with Lori. We just showed up on the set, and we had the best stunt doubles for us. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of clever rigs and a lot of dollies with fixed bikes on it. So they were able to cut it together where people, to this day, think that I, I did a lot of my stunts. So, and anybody who's got a good eye, I assume you're one of those people, Tony, can see where uh, it's not so seamless. But that's part of the fun of it and, and seeing what worked and what didn't work. But what did work was the overall effect. People really loved the movie. And while there are a lot of kids who haven't seen it, there are a lot of kids who have, a lot of guys your age who have young ones, who now they show them the movie as they're going to the races, and, and it's really become a multi-generational phenomenon. Yeah. I remember as a kid, man, watching it, and that was my psych-up movie, you know what I mean? I'd sit down, I'd watch Rad, and that's it. I'd be pumped all afternoon. I'd be out on the bike for about a good four or five hours after that. That was my afternoon. Sit down, watch Rad, and then I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I think that story is very common. It's very special to hear those stories, but it was embraced by a whole generation of kids. And, uh, you know, I was a latchkey kid myself, meaning my parents were at work when I got home from school, and, and I, I share that story with a lot of kids who saw Rad at that time, and it just it spoke to them. And they just went out and, and got on their bikes and pretended they were Crew Jones and went out and got paper roots and, and it really really affected them in a good way and I'm pretty proud of that yeah that's sick have you got any good stories from the set when um, during the movie when it was getting made boy I, I gotta tell you I, I, I nearly killed myself on, on more than one occasion by kind of mixing it up which was the front brake and which was the rear brake and you know yeah. not really having a helmet on and, 
and having very little supervision. So yeah, I, I nearly killed myself a couple of times between takes. And actually, there's one take, <clears throat> the scene where Talia's coming to the track, and I've just finished qualifying uh, for Hell Track. And so I'm I'm riding into my group of friends. You hit the front brake. That scene, but you, yeah, same thing. So I hit my front brake by accident, and it kind of launches me into my friend's arms, which is cool for the tape. Yeah, it yeah, looks yeah. Great, but it's clearly a mistake on my part. And had I been going a little faster, it would have been disastrous. But, uh, <laughs> so uh, there, uh, there were certain times where where maybe I shouldn't have been doing things and, and uh, luckily made it through alive. But that's that's much alive for us in the 80s, right? That's awesome. I remember, um, and, and it's funny, hey, like you said, you, you watch this movie a thousand times and you start picking up all the little things. Like you are saying at the dollies and stuff during the dance scene on the, um, in, the, in the school hall, whatever it was, and you can see like the little frame that the bikes attached to and used to are sitting on top of the bikes, like just pedaling the pedals and the bikes are just moving around the dance floor. It was pretty cool. It's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, people love that. <laughs> That's the funniest part. How many times have you actually seen the movie yourself? How many times? Well, probably all together, maybe eight or ten times yep. from first reel to the end. Um, mostly, that's been over the past five years since the 25th anniversary. There was a screening in, in Westwood about the same time. So I was able to see it with Hal Needham probably three or four times. And that was a thrill. That yep. was a particular thrill because he really got to see the effect the movie had 25 years later. And one of these screenings I was talking about, I think it was in Canada, and the audience was going crazy. I mean, it was like a Rocky Ford picture show where <laughs> people were screaming lines at the, at the screen and, and throwing stuff and... and smoking jazz cigarettes or whatever they were doing and I turned to Hal I said Hal has any one of your movies had this effect and he says absolutely not that's crazy you know? and I saw it play out because the last time I saw Hal was at a screening for Smokey and the Bandit here in Los Angeles and it was lovely and people were respectful but it was not the same effect yep. that that Rad Bands had you know it just it was really a marked difference from is smoky to his rad audience, and, and I gotta say, the rad fans are so much more enthusiastic and so much more still into the culture. Yep, yeah, I think too. I think a lot of the BMXs sort of think about it as well. Somebody's taken the time and, and put the effort into our sport. You know, we look at it now, and, and BMX is a little bit underrated, I think, and a little bit underappreciated. I mean, it's an Olympic sport now. And still, I, you know, as a rider myself, you know, we feel like we don't get the appreciation because this is a hard sport, man. Like, this is one of the toughest sports. And I've played football, tennis, cricket, you know, whatever, every other sport out there. And BMX is hard. It's a hard sport because there's so many elements to it. There's seven other crazy kids trying to knock you off. And, and you've been to some ABA races too. I mean, you can understand where I'm coming from. Like, it's a hard sport and it's so underappreciated. And I think the fact that, yourself and, and all the other actors in the movie and the director they've taken the time and effort out and said we're gonna we're gonna put something into this movie and, and make it represent bmx and and i think back then a lot of the bmx's were pretty pretty happy with the with the outcome it was sweet yeah we took a lot of liberties and there was a lot of crossover that rarely happens in that kind of sport whether you know it's freestyle to to racing, to, to ramp, to vert. I mean, uh, there were a lot of liberties taken with the script, and I understand that, but the fans embraced it anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it was so cool. It, 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 still, it still opened up uh, the world to that sport, and the opening and closing credits, almost more than anything, uh, people really studied those like a farmer studies dirt, and yeah. it was really... It was really eye-opening, and you knew those shots were not faked. Yeah. There was no CGA, CGI at the time and no stunt doubles going on. You know, we really saw those guys doing what they do best, and that was thrilling for people. It still yeah. is. It's still great stuff. I mean, we didn't have the social media that we got today, but that thing sort of set the level for the rest of the world. It's like, hey, this is what we're doing in America. What are you guys doing in the rest of the world? And, and I remember coming... 
I raced BMX and my goal in BMX was to do a backflip on a BMX bike. Before I quit BMX racing or whatever, my goal was to do a flip on dirt. So I think yeah. finally did it uh, like 10 years ago, but I did it for about two weeks and then I rolled my ankle. Yeah, that's enough of that. <laughs> that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievably difficult and a good friend of mine. Ended up in the hospital a couple of weeks ago attempting it to a foam pit. Yep. It is really dangerous stuff. Uh, the backflip, you see it done every day in every skate park. But, man, is it just unbelievably scary and, and difficult to make. It's so scary. It goes against everything you've ever learned on a BMX because you're always taught to lean forward and push down. This is lean back and look behind you. Yeah. And now we got guys doing what? Triples. Double, triple, triple flips. Triple. <laughs> triple back flips, double front flips, yeah, crazy. They're like Nintendo games. Well, yeah, it's 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 really uh, gone so far that I don't think anybody even expected that. <laughs> Five years. Ago. Yeah, yeah. You um, you go to a few ABA races still, or you just turn up to the grands? Yeah, I sure do. I try to make uh, as many of these events as I can. Um, uh, I love talking to the fans, and I love mixing it up, and, and uh, it's kind of my own legacy. Yeah. So it's it's really meaningful for the fans when for I sure. show up. Oh, that's all amazing. You know, it's cool. It's, yeah. it's kind of my my little superpower, and and it's it's uh, something that energizes me, and I, I get so much. Um, inspiration from the people and the kids and the parents that I meet who are in the sport and, yep. and it's inspired me to take up the sport in my 50s I'm now studying with Martin Aparejo on Tuesday from Huntington Beach I wasn't able to make it today but uh, this is kind of my thing so um, I'm trying to do what I wasn't able to do 25 years ago in my next movie which is, is really uh have some competency when I get on a bike. Wow. So how, where are you at? How are you going on the bike? Uh, I'm only a month into it, and uh, I'm expecting the delivery of my Eddie Fiola 24-inch bike next weekend or next week. So uh, we're just at the beginning of a long road, but you got to start somewhere, and I happen to have the best coach I can possibly have. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's funny, you see that a lot now with racing, you know, the, the parents, their kids get into BMX and the parents are sitting there on the sidelines and they'll see the other parents out there and then they get this, the bright idea, oh, I'm going to start racing too and you'll see it. Guys at 30, late 30s, early 40s getting on the bike themselves and having a bit of a ride. It's crazy, yeah. I'm seeing guys who gave it up in their, you know, 20s not doing it for, for a long time. I'm kind of studying flatland right now and, and I'll be getting into... <coughs> Uh, mountain biking soon, but um, I think what we're finding with these extreme sportsmen, these Travis Pastranas and the, and the Matt Hoffmans of the world, is it's about the sportsmen. It's not so much about what they're on or what they're riding or you know, whether it's a razor scooter or a big wheel or inline skates or, or, or a snowmobile. You know, it's about getting there. It's about doing things that nobody's ever done on these sports and with your body, you know. So, I mean, I'm into uh, powered parachuting also. That's the other extreme sports that I'm into. Yeah. So it's electric skateboards. Electric skateboarding is another thing I do. So, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of finding the edge of human capability in all these. And while we think we're finding the edge, where are we going to be in 20 years? You yeah. can't even imagine it. We can't even think about what's going on with the new uh, propulsion systems and, and, and uh, safety gear and all these things. It's just, it's really exciting to be yeah. a part of all that. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. Hey, just a quick question I wanted to ask you was um, about the riders in the movie. Do you know how they picked the riders for the movie? You know, the actual pro riders that they had in the event. Did they actually have a race or they just sort of went around and said, okay, we want you, you, you and you? Yeah, I believe as far as uh, Eddie, uh, he was pretty much uh, my main stunt double. They talked to him exclusively yep. uh, 
before production started. But as far as the other racers, I believe they contacted uh, tracks and, and, and through magazines, the pro riders that they could, kind of put the word out on the street. This yep. is what they were doing. These, these are the level riders they were looking for. Yeah, okay. And, of course, they couldn't get everybody that they wanted because uh, a lot of people were on the circuit. And they had to go, uh, you know, finish their their commitments or make their money. You know, it was not it was not a lot of money for the regular riders in that movie. For sure. But all, uh, I can tell you, so many meets I go to, I've met some of these guys who could have been in the movie. Yeah. Who just it, it just means their soul that they didn't do it. Yeah. That they had the chance yeah. and they just they zigged when they could and snagged. And now it's like, oh, I, I could have been in the Gone with the Wind of BMX bikes. So, you know, so it's it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm still so caught up in it. Do you um you were saying before you get to a few of the ABA races? Do you got any favorite riders now that you watch? Uh, well, I mean, I'm good friends with uh, Donnie Robinson yep. and and uh, Mike Dominguez. I see these guys uh, around, and and mostly I'm friends with a lot of the old school guys. Uh, but I do have the opportunity to go some of the races and, and see some of the up and comers. But yeah, I just saw Donnie. Uh, I guess a week and a half ago. Awesome. And, you know, it was at an old school event at uh, Woodward West, and Ryan Nyquist was also there. And and these guys will often give their props to me. And and man. I, I can't tell you how humbling that is. It's really, it's really amazing. You, you know what a difficult road that is. And you know what these guys have to put their bodies through uh, to achieve that. And, and so to be even a little part of their this one's really special. That's cool, huh? You're um yeah. I, I watched another interview, and and you've obviously you got a book out at the moment, my red career. Did I say that right? Yeah, if you go to myradcareer.com, you can order a copy of it, and it's a, kind of a, a biography, autobiography, if you will, of my acting career. People don't know that I actually did things before Rad and after Rad. Yep. <laughs> but, <clears throat> people kind of focus on that, and that's fine, but uh, I've got some other exciting things coming up, and I give a lot of behind-the-scenes stories of Rad, and... Uh, my leading up to rad and, and, and post rad life, so it kind of gives fans an overview of what what it was like and, and an overview of what I've been into since. So people are really responding to it. I'm yeah, really happy with it. awesome. What well, hey um one of the things you talk about in it is uh, you had a relationship with Brandon Lee, who's a good friend of yours. Good friend. Yeah. Your friend Brandon. Yeah. Can you talk about I that met, a little bit? I met Brandon through. Yeah, sure. I met Brandon through uh, a mutual friend, uh, Miguel Ferrer, who's on a TV series out here called NCIS Los Angeles, I believe, one of these police dramas. But yep. anyway, a uh, mutual acting friend, and uh, we started an acting class together probably in 1987, I'm guessing, 1988, <clears throat> and became fast friends. Uh, I was kind of a redneck from Texas, and, and he he was who he was. So I, I, I'm kind of surprised with such different backgrounds that we hit it off so well. But what we had in common is we wanted to be actors. That's all we wanted out of life. Yep. So we were ended up in the same acting class. We were we were uh, on the same kind of locomotive, although. His had a lot more steam than mine did because of uh, his birthright, but make no mistake, he worked very, very hard at what he did, both acting and in martial arts. So uh, to this day, every day, I, I take much inspiration on his drive and his willingness to kind of put himself out there. You know, we were in a, uh, a theater group together, and we were doing small pieces uh, for 25 people or less, 10 people, whoever would show up, and he didn't need to do that. Yep. He was trying to get to the art uh, of, of what he was interested in, he found that, and, and really it, 
was on the precipice of exploding as yep. an artist. Well, he had um, he had probably a similar thing to yourself. We had one of those movies that probably was a late bloomer with The Crow. I mean, that's a huge cult following now, that movie. And, um, yeah, probably something similar to yourself. And, I mean, obviously he's not around these days to uh, to appreciate it, but um, they even now they still play it on, on um, cable TV in Australia, like, all the time. It's on all the time. Well, it's interesting. It's interesting because we were so tight, and now, you know, we now have this iconic movie that follows our us around he's he's no longer with us but but almost defines our career in yeah. a way yeah you know uh i'm i'm, plan, I'm planning on having a, a, a third act that he never got yeah so kind of a weird way i feel like I'm, I'm representing and uh i've also got plans to do a movie uh, on relationship so i wrote a script yeah yeah cool and we plan to go shoot a so you've been doing, um, I wrote some stuff. So you've been directing your own short films. Hey, I've been, this is me, I've been going nuts. Wikipedia, I've been watching YouTube interviews. So obviously you're a pilot. Okay. You're in a band as well called the Pipe Fitters. Uh, well, you know what? I was in a band with the Pipe Fitters, uh, with Lou Diamond Phillips. That was in the 90s. Uh, my latest musical endeavor is a musical tribute to a Texas blues legend, which is where I grew up in, in Dallas. And uh, it's called The King of Clubs. And if you're interested, you can go to thekingofclubscd.com. And it's kind of an all-star tribute to uh, our friend Bugs. Got Steve Lukather from Toto, Vivian Campbell from, help me out, is he from Slayer or Poison? You know, you metal guy. Anyway, uh, Orianti. Yep. You know Orianti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's on it all. Uh, Orianti's on it, so uh, it's kind of a smashing all-star tribute to my friend Bugs Henderson. And speaking of Ori, uh, you know, I saw her on television, as we all did during the Michael Jackson tour, the This Is It, his final shows, and I saw this blonde vision playing that Paul Reed Smith guitar. And I don't know about you, but I fell in love with this girl like that immediately. So I saw her on the news, and I just... You know, I had to forget about that I was married at the time. And, uh, <laughs> like, this, this is the woman I'm ending up with, obviously. And uh, so we're producing this CD, and probably a year and a half after that, uh, she's in the studio playing on my CD that I'm producing, and I get to drive her to her hotel in my crappy old Ford Ranger pickup truck, driving beside her going, you know, she has no idea how we're supposed to really be together in the end. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't let her in on it, but you know, life is ironic like that. So uh, I find a lot of fans who really grew up watching Rad uh, and 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 taking it to heart when they actually meet me. It, it kind of closes a circle for them yeah. in a way that hey, I loved you. I loved your image, and now I'm meeting you as a person. Yeah. What a cool thing, you know? What and what a what a nice thing for me to be able to share with somebody because I know that I'm not that image. I was an actor on a movie set, yet guys like yourself really took that movie to heart, and some of them watched it thousands of times, and some of them became world class athletes and Olympic athletes. Yeah, and. So for them to meet me, it's 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 a it, it's it's really special for both of us. Yeah, I, I can tell you, there's a connection. Uh, th there's a connection that not many actors get to have with their fans. Yeah, like that. Have you ever been down to Australia? I want to go. No, I have not. It's good. We should organize a um a, a retro thing and get you out of here for it. That'd be sick. Let's do it. You yeah, watch. I can tell you, I'm really excited about the book. And with Heroes of Dirt coming out, and with oh, the yeah. 30th anniversary, I'm pretty excited about uh, several things, so I'm happy to, to come out. Cool. We'll have to stay in touch. Hey, all right, now, I need you to put your Crew Jones hat on. You ready? Uh, i got a rapid-fire 10 questions I put together. You excited? All right, here we go. You ready? Yep. Why does Crew Jones eat breakfast with his gloves on? 
Have you ever smelt gloves after you've worn them for a couple of weeks? Like, they just stink. Terrible. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. It'll make you touch down the cereal. All right, what about this one? What's going on with Rod and Rex and Bart only having two girlfriends? stuff going on behind the scenes that might be a little more acceptable today, but back then it was just, uh, yeah, just different. I don't judge. No, I don't judge either. I thought it was amazing. I'm like, well, obviously they're having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is all just dumb shit we used to talk about when we were kids. It was pretty funny. You know, in the, the at the start of the movie, there's a paper route scene, right? And there's two old guys sitting in the boat and she drops the paper in the boat. Why is the boat like, yes. why are they sitting in a boat? They're like, and then they're fishing towards the bank. Like, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think it was kind of like a town of retards. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's like a leper colony, only, only for the uh, dull of wit. So, yeah, there, there is some wacky stuff going on. My question is, why was crew delivering a single newspaper to a 7-Eleven? Yeah, they would. They wouldn't get a pile of them in the morning or anything, would they? No. Yeah, yeah. So again, there weren't a lot of big things. <laughs> did you ever? Did you ever hook up with Laurie Lachlan in real life? Well, hook up has a different ter- uh, meaning these days. So unfortunately, no. There was there was no hooking up. There was there was some heavy uh, dating that that I I screwed up pretty pretty early on in the relationship. She she put a bullet in that thing early on <laughs> wisely for her. You know, I was kind of a root coming out of Dallas and uh, I was not ready for this uh, Long Island uh, vision and, 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 and somebody who was clearly more sophisticated than I was. So, uh, it was like uh, it was like three vodkas put an end to that. Yeah, yeah. Or we just pretended you guys lived happily ever after, so that's fine. In my mind. Yeah, in our mind. <laughs> Did, um... <laughs> was Mike Miranda drunk on set? Why did he keep falling off all the time? Mike Miranda? What a superstar. I just heard a story about Mike Miranda earlier. Yeah, he was he was up to some hijinks, brother, on that set. And, uh, man, can I tell this story? Can I tell the story yeah, yeah. that uh, he stole Sergeant Smith's motorcycle and took it on a joyride? And uh, production heard about this, and he, he nearly got his ass fired right there. <laughs> so, yeah, he was Hollywood Mike Miranda. That's awesome. You know, so I think he was kind of going. The nickname, and we had some real hot shots on that set. Let's oh, yeah. face it, you know, and and not the most of which was Bart Connor, but as far as writers there, you know, and we also had some stuntmen. So there was a lot of one upsmanship going on. Yeah, right yeah. There. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, the last one. What the hell does Hulk Hogan eat your heart out have to do with BMX? I'm thinking that did Hulk used to do a. Whip I don't. Ropes. Maybe he I did. Think that, I'm thinking that was the rabbit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't yeah, sure. How did the How did the wrestling movie do? I don't know if that has anything to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I think they were just throwing any culture in that they could. Yeah. Which is the whole reason they did the bicycle boogie dance. It's like they every movie back then, you know, flash dance and all these goofy movies had the the musical sequence in that, that really was just kind of crowbarred in there. Yeah, yeah. So they did that for the bumpy sequence. <laughs> all right. That's all I got. That was awesome. A lot of fun. <laughs> okay, so uh, myradcareer.com, the king of clubs, cd.com, yep. and uh, Arrows of Dirt. You can go to the Facebook page and find out when that's going to be released. Awesome. I'll, um, I'll tag all those links in under this on um, YouTube as well. Right. Mate, Bill, awesome, man. Hey, appreciate you taking the time and um, clearing up some, some questions on this movie. It's been haunting me for the last 30 years, so it was good to chat to you, man. Great. And, um, yeah, look, we'll stay in touch. Right. I'll, I'll, um, yeah, we'll stay in touch and we'll, um, we'll, we'll talk soon.
Sounds great. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for your time, man.